Wait a second, this isn't this isn't the crew two. Where am I? How how long has it been? How long has it been Oh fuck so yeah, I disappear for six months and this is what I come back with. Now, a review of an update for a driving game gone two years old isn't exactly a hot topic, but given the next update just came out, I thought, hey, let's be fashionably late. Besides, I only plan to cover the chase update in this video. Though given I've played the alpha and betas for the game, played it for over two years, got all the way to Icon 1600, grinded my way to top 4000 all time, played Motor Trend Classic Challenge literally a thousand times, played it on stream every week for months, consistently got top 1000 in each summit, poured over a hundred pounds into this goddamn Ubisoft game, questioned my financial decisions and eyed up my bathroom razor, then yeah. I might review it at some point, though till you get to Icon and Endgame, it's exactly the same experience as release. Same cookie cutter story, same reason to put your voice volume to zero, and somehow motocross makes me want to die more. So be sure to like and subscribe. I'm watching, you better do it. But with those bases covered, let's just jump into it with the motor pass. Now let me state this for the record, battle passes are actually a good idea, they can be done really well. I mean look at Fortnite, Rocket League to an extent, but Ubisoft's implementation is one of the worst passes I think I've ever seen. I'm not upset with the fact that it's a copy of the hobby system they introduced in the update prior, since you can take inspiration from yourself, that's fine by me. If it's a system that works, by all means use it. The problem is pricing and how they've structured this thing, but to explain that, let me explain what I look for in a good battle pass. What makes a good pass to me is twofold. First off, the rewards. You've got to actually have good enough rewards to incentivize people to play the game and get the pass leveled up, because if you don't, well there's no motivation to get it in the first place. And come on Ivory Tower, giving us two free tiers as a reward isn't a reward, it's an excuse. Come on guys. The second part of the battle pass equation is pricing and how they actually convince you to fork your money out every season. Typically to me a good battle pass would reward the most dedicated players with enough currency to get the next pass. So you put a bit of money at the start, play daily, get all of your objectives done, maybe even have pocket change left for a couple of skins, and then you'll be on your merry way. So in that sense, it's all well and good, is what I would say if this was a free to play game. But nope, the Crew 2 still has the balls to command 40 quid for the base edition on Steam in the UK, not to mention all the other purchase options. But I understand it to an extent, because for a live service game like this, especially with such a focus on cosmetics, they want to keep developing it, and developers need money. Holy shit, this battle pass is terrible value. So the motor pass costs 80 K crew credits. Fair enough, makes sense. But when you only reward players with 40k crew credits on the premium and 20k on the free one, do you see the problem here? Couple that with the removal of live contracts and we've got ourselves a big f***ing problem. If you're a free player, you're going to have to wait through four motor passes, also known as eight months. And even if you were lucky enough to get the premium pass right out of the gate, you've still got to wait through two once you've used that up. Now the obvious solution would be to make the rewards equal to the price of the pass, but Ubisoft don't want to do that, they want to make you pay. So here's my alternate solution, add an 1000 CC reward for every tier over 50. That way, the normal players still get the same benefits, but the truly hardcore players get rewarded for their dedication. So before I completely blow my gasket regarding the motor pass, let's switch gears a bit, let's talk about the chase mode. And my best summary of the chase mode is, it's okay. If I had to sum it up in a sentence, Tesco Road Rage from Burnout would be a close second. So let's talk about that. Having played hundreds of hours of Road Rage and now the chase mode, I can solidly narrow down what makes these modes good and fun to play, and in the Crew 2's case, what it lacks. Actually, how would you improve the chase mode? Let me know in the comments. The first thing is consistency. You've got to have consistency with your physics and how the cars handle, and more particularly, how they react to collisions. When it comes to the crew, if I'm boosting up, I don't know if I'm going to hit this guy straight to Brazil, or if I'm just going to mildly tap him with one point of damage. With that inconsistency, what ends up happening is the crew's combat just feels lifeless. It doesn't feel impactful in any meaningful way. If you can't predict how your or the other car is going to react in that situation, what ends up happening is any impact or any attack just feels like a glorified dice roll. Which isn't exactly ideal given this is a game mode based around wheel to wheel combat and impactful takedowns. The next thing is difficulty, or as I like to describe it, how this game's AI cue better than the British themselves. If you take a swing at the AI, they don't swing back at you, they don't dodge you, they don't get more aggressive the more damaged they are, they don't try any manoeuvres, they don't band together, they have a set path, that's it. If you knock them off, they just path straight back on and continue on their merry way. Again, with a game mode set up and designed to feel like gruelling wheel to wheel combat, the last thing you want it to feel like is just lining up V8 powered clay pigeons. The last thing is the danger factor, or at least in the crew's case, the lack of it. Notice how your enemies have a health bar and you don't? If I had to pick one improvement from this entire video, it would be adding a health bar to your car, because the lack of danger for you as a player, it kills any sense of urgency that you should be feeling. We've seen that they can add player health because look at the demo derby mode, just crank that value up by three times and boom, we'd have an instant solution. 
There's a reason that all other road rages have some form of health bar or health mechanic, because without that incentive to pick your shots, you can just go willy-nilly straight into every wall and not have to care, especially with this game's lax timer. Ivory Tower, if you do see this, just know that I don't hate you guys. I've loved your game since pretty much the day it came out, and the only reason I'm tearing you into your update with a rusty fork is because it comes from a place of love. I want nothing more than to see this game do well and succeed and hit a wider audience. With some well-spent development time, I can see things like the chase mode becoming something really interesting. So Ivory Tower, experiment. Try adding a health bar. Try adding some more complex AI movements. Try adding some varying conditions even. Add some more disciplines to the mix. And never mind, they just scrapped it. Hey, it's me, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video as well as my new style of content, be sure to subscribe if you want to see more where that came from and like the video as well. If you didn't enjoy it, dislike it, tell me why in the comments. And finally, if you really want to go the extra mile and join everyone on the screen right now, be sure to hit up my Patreon, links in the description.